It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is senior awareness. And joining me is Kay Kaiser, who is the information specialist for Helping Seniors. And you can reach her by calling 321-473-7770. Welcome, Kay. Thank you. You know, we, we will do and an awareness type show periodically here as part of our information uh, network for helping seniors. Mm -hmm. And what we say on this show might be the basis for something that happens for seven or eight or 10 years from now in Brevard County. As, as, as a, for instance, we have, uh, we are publishing a uh, survey to try to find out just what seniors think they need in Brevard County. This is not something where a group of people are telling seniors what they think they need, but it's the seniors themselves and those that care for seniors. Of course, anybody can take a senior the, the survey wants to. Surely. But we hope that people will come back and answer these questions and so that we can build an advocacy plan for our county. And Based on the amount of time that you've been working as an information specialist for seniors, for, for helping seniors, why do you, Kay Kaiser, think that we need an advocacy plan for seniors in Brevard County, Florida? Well, I believe we need an advocacy plan because there really is no plan for seniors in a written form in our community. And how are we going to make the changes? I get the calls coming in where people are asking, I need this help, I need this help. And usually it's more than one issue when we start really talking to each other. But I think it's important to hear the seniors' voices and come up with a written plan that can help make changes for what seniors really do need in our community. And for up and coming years, as you mentioned, they may watch this show down the line and still may be some additional planning being made. And if people do something like that, they can go to our website, right. helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, and they can look at the headings on our, on our website, and they will see places where they can get information back to us on how they think some of the needs have changed. Absolutely. Uh, a good advocacy plan, a good aging plan, is, it should not be something that is locked into place. It should be a, a viable, living, growing document because needs change. Absolutely. It's going to be have to be flexible because it may be something tomorrow that we didn't think about that suddenly arises that a lot of seniors are saying we need help on this as well. Yeah. I think one of the things that you're finding from, from our conversations, one of the greatest needs we're, we're finding uh, from senior citizens, many of them, is simply companionship. Absolutely. Now, a lot of seniors are, I just got off the phone before we're taping here. You know, they, they may lose a spouse and they're very lonely. And I recommend a lot to seniors, well, you know, there's various senior centers throughout our community. Get out, socialize. You'll be surprised how many friends that you may meet and you're doing things, so you're not just sitting home alone. I think you have touched on something that uh, we don't really talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's the need for the seniors themselves to stop being couch potatoes. That's right. Get out among the community and try to do something yourself. I know they, we, we use the word sedentary yes. with, with seniors far too often. Uh, That's when true. my fibromyalgia bothers me and when uh, I have some small effects from, as a result of the stroke I had, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not immune to things. But if I just sat down in my chair 
and stop my mental process. Stop thinking I could contribute. I'm, I'm making a mistake. Absolutely. A, a recent show we did here, and it's a, the uh, Shine coordinator, the, the manager for Shine in our area, Lance Jarvis, um, he pointed out the need for uh, people to be involved. And certainly, uh, Shine counselors are a living example of how you can be a contributor to the community. That's right. That's a perfect example. I get many calls from people saying, I would like to volunteer. And I'll put them in touch in different areas. And, you know, and now I'm thinking, here, now we might have some opportunities as well. But uh, the bottom line is I've seen, having worked in the senior market for a number of years too, Joe, the difference of people when they get around other people instead of, okay, I lost my spouse. You know, certainly that's an emotional and it's heartbreaking. However, to just sit in a chair and be, a, like you said, a couch potato is only going to regress that senior, not progress. So once they've been out and around other people, it's 180 different degrees. I know, but you know, Kay, <laughs> sometimes it's important to be a couch potato. Oh, you have to sometimes. So That's many, right. so many seniors under the guise of thinking that uh, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. You don't always have to have to do something. That's true. Sometimes it's better to sit back and think about what you are thinking about doing. And maybe you don't need to do some of the things you're doing that could be detrimental to your health. True. And sometimes for some people that's a hard call. It is. But I, I, I think that uh, you now have been the information specialist for helping seniors for a number of months, a number of months. Mm -hmm. um, you know we've started the advocacy group, right? And that is to advocate to the county commissioners that we need to build a written aging plan for Brevard County, Florida. Right. I've looked on the internet and I found other counties that have identified a mission, a vision a strategic plan for accomplishing uh, certain objectives and goals, put right. some time frames around it. Yes. And I, I think most of us know that the amount of money that we have available to do all this is not endless. That's right. We, we have to be smart about how we're doing things. But I don't think that a community that wants to be elder friendly or wants to sort of adjust to changing needs mm -hmm. that keeps needs to be locked in far to the left side or something. They need to be able to move to the right or back and right. forth. And Joe, you have the statistics on we're the 24th oldest county in the country, yet we get a fraction, what was that, one-tenth of one percent of monies that is allocated for seniors in our community? Well. Yeah, we, we, well, we're the 24th oldest county in terms of the 3,067 in the United States of America. Right. Our county, our county commissioners actually approved a very minuscule amount of money to be used directly for seniors. Now, that's not to say seniors use the roads. Seniors use the mosquito service. Sure. Uh, we do it a lot of things, but there are community services provided for everyone. Right. But... Under the tax bill, 44.6% of the tax dollars under general revenue funds mm -hmm. go into education for children. That's right. There's no line item in there for, for seniors. seniors. And seniors, we are right now, as part of the, one of the things we're doing under the advocacy plan, people, right. is to help people understand what the financial impact of the seniors themselves are on the continued ability of our county to pay its bills. Right, exactly. And you know, when you get down to reality, if we go by AARP standards of 50 plus, we're counting for, what, two out of four people in the community here. Yeah, actually, I think the number you came up with is 162,000. 162,000. Meet that, meet that uh, category in terms of, and I, I forget, we've got something like 450 or 60,000 people. Brown County, Florida uh, is a huge county. We don't, you know, I, I like to think about the little town, county I grew up in in Kentucky. 
uh, there were about 30,000 people in the county. <laughs> it's a big difference, a big difference when you live in a county like this. Absolutely. But one of the things I think that uh, our new organization brings to the table is um, an ability to disseminate information. And while we're doing that, we are helping to educate our people. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you didn't. You weren't here when uh, Mr. Jarvis was talking about uh, um, medically disadvantaged people qualifying for Medicare. Oh yes, that's so, a, that's that's an unknown territory, isn't it? Yes, it is unknown, but it won't be because I want to make sure that <laughs> you listen to the part of the tape that addresses that topic because it opens up a whole new program of awareness, and there were two other programs that Mr. Jarvis talked about that can assist seniors, and these are programs that come under Medicaid, mm -hmm. and uh, as familiar as I am with all these uh, benchmarks and programs that are available to help seniors, I wasn't aware of them. So uh, education never stops. Absolutely, and didn't you tell me, too, that you were frustrated recently in trying to get, you know, some run around phone calls and with all your knowledge that happened to even you well <laughs> you have to be careful what what you say sometimes on a show because um a lot of it depends getting an, an answer depends on who you're talking to i think you and i both have been in the public market long enough to know that uh, people purport to be an expert on something and they're far from it right um but one of the hardest nails to drive home that I've encountered in the elder care system in the state of Florida is to find out who is willing to accept responsibility for something. And, and the point was uh, Good point. really really illustrated to me when uh, I asked a uh, Department of Children and Families uh, worker who is responsible for what right. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, well, how in the world do you make sure people know about that kind of assistance? And the answer was word of mouth. Ooh. I said, you don't have a pamphlet, you don't have a radio show, you don't put it in any kind of, why not use the elder advocate, the quarterly paper that comes out from the state of Florida? Right, right. You know, if we don't put meaningful information in something, people are not going to want to read it. That's right. But I suspect, and we are finding out, that we, our organization has a column in Hometown News. Mm -hmm. We have a column in Senior Scene Magazine, Spotlight Magazine. We're in television on Bright House, Space Coast Television, our own website. All the shows are archived. Uh, people are beginning to respect the type of information there because they know it's true and it's honest and it's it's something they should know because it could help them or help someone they love or a friend or a neighbor right and that's what a good senior awareness program does it creates outlets i yeah i totally agree and with the calls that i take in joe it, you know it's like i didn't even have a clue about that type of service um, and again, it's that education and reaching out to the public to inform them. So we're not only the get, taking the incoming, but we're doing the outcoming too. With the result being that people will be more informed. And you're right, the word of mouth is actually happening about helping seniors of Brevard. So, right. And there's, well. I think that uh, in some respects, we are. Um, we're not really well informed. We're informed, but we're not informed to the degree that we should be. And of course, every time you say something like that, uh, if somebody tells you something, mm -hmm. they may tell you 90% of what they need to tell you, and the 10% they don't tell you is what really makes a difference whether it's icing on the cake that's going to stick or fall off. Oh, I agree, totally. And yes. I I'm thinking in terms of a call you had regarding medical assistance. Uh, and I don't want to get into naming of, of, of organizations or anything like that. Right. But if somebody goes 
to an emergency room at any hospital. Yes. That hospital is responsible for admitting that person, at least for a look. Whether they keep them or discharge them, that's something that should be based on the, the, what happens after the initial look. Exactly. But we shouldn't, anybody that's a potential user of the system needs to know that they shouldn't let a hospital turn them away. That's right. See, they're just basic needs, oh, basic information indeed. we need to know that, and that's what some, is that what you're finding when you get phone calls from people? Oh, without a doubt, Joe. I mean, it's just, it's heartbreaking. I mean, for what I do, I have to be very patient. Um, I will take the time to listen to someone because, as I mentioned, oftentimes when someone calls, they may call about a particular issue, but in discovering and developing a relationship with them on the phone, it could be four or five. And now that fourth or fifth issue actually becomes the number one issue and the reason why they called. Yeah. I, I think that uh, before World War II, uh, when we had ships out in the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean and they went to the Orient, they had a famous expression called uh, a rice bowl. Oh. And if, uh, if somebody did something that was contrary to what the accepted use of, of the rice bowl, rice bowl provider was, they were called breaking the rice bowl. And I think of there's a movie called The Sand Pebbles. Uh -huh. And when the uh, Chinese uh, uh, engine workers in the engine room, uh, they did all the dirty work, and yet, yet the sailors uh, was, was sort of sometimes get involved, and he had a guy come on board that, that what really wanted to do his job. Mm -hmm. And what it, called, what it entailed was bracing the, breaking the rice bowl of the chief Chinese coolie <laughs> who, who sort of ran the, ran the engine room. But this man knew that if they went into war as they did when, when we had the problems in Peking in 1925 and 1926, mm -hmm. that unless the American sailors could do their job, right. they could not depend on somebody else to do it. The right. same thing with our elder care system. Absolutely. It's a yeah. good analogy. Yeah. We can't depend on somebody else to do what we should be doing ourselves, and I think that's so important. I agree with you 100%. The survey that you have in front of you that uh, we hope people will take, what do you think that the end result of that survey will be, Kay, based on the phone calls that you've, you've had? It's a loaded question, I know yeah, the you end weren't result? prepared for it, but. Well, the end result is going to allow the group that has gotten together as a Senior Advocacy Council from Helping Seniors of Brevard help put together that written plan to take to our officials and say, okay, now we have some proof here. We need, we have a plan. And that's something that has not really been done in our community. Yep. And I think, Kay, I'd like to make sure that our, our viewing audience understands what you and I are talking about. Viewers, uh, for several years we've known that we don't have a written plan for aging in Brevard County. That's not to say we don't have great organizations, good services, we, we have all that. But it's not tied together. Uh, there are too many what I call individual rice bowls. We're trying to put it all together into a pot so we know how to distribute the rice. Uh, right. That's not going to be easy. And I, we have one gentleman that's on the survey group at... Uh, you mean advocacy group? Adv advocacy group <laughs> that said, why don't we prepare an aging plan and give it to the commissioners? Right. He said, if we don't do it, we're going to be end up in the same situation that we are now. That's right. Nobody doing anything. anything. <laughs> so... It's well, more work. Yeah, it's more work, but I believe the end result will get some attention. Yeah, and the important key thing, viewer, is not the government doing this. These are private citizens That's right. that pay the tax bills, that are the ultimate users of the services, that are stating their vision for what the needs are, 
putting them together in a written document and handing that to the county commissioners at some point in the future and saying, here's what we think. What can we expect you and your staff right. to take a look at and see if we can't come up with a better way of using our tax dollars, arriving at how people should be served? Now, Nobody ex should expect a free ride. The seniors I talk to That's don't right. expect a free ride, Kate. Right, no, no. We don't, first of all, you know, I t had a call yesterday from somebody saying I need, I need money to, I just need money. And I said, well, after discovering they're on a limited income and everything, and, and oftentimes people just, they don't plan their budget. So, you know, I kind of reflect on a little bit of that. but. At the same time, I said, we're, we're a grassroots organization. We're a nonprofit. But I said, you know, if um, we can't help them all, Joe, and we can't be handing out money to somebody who just says, give it to me. No, we're not going to do that. Because that's not going to happen. No. But I think back to the advocacy, um, ultimately, too, is that we hope to have an endowment fund in the future that a percentage can really help those who, who simply can't help themselves. Yeah, I, I think viewers, you should need to understand what Kay is talking about as an, as an endowment. Is an endowment sponsored and developed by private people, not the government. Right. We are not building another entitlement program. And just because we have an endowment doesn't mean that we're going to go out and serve every need that somebody thinks they have. We that's not that's, that's, that's not going to happen. That's not the purpose. Yeah, it, we're, we're, it's, uh, it's it's not another entitlement program that we're trying to develop. Exactly. We're trying to develop something that will cause a county of people to start thinking together to figure out a better way to provide services. Right. I don't know. I lost. I did have a number of how many nonprofits that we had here in New York County. But let's say we have 100 nonprofit organizations and we have 100 nonprofit executors, uh, executives making $60,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. That's, six, what, $6 million? That's right. Yeah. $6 million under two or three chief executive officers. And what I'm saying is we need to rethink yes. what we've been doing for the past do a better, more cost-effective job of it, meet the real needs, not just what somebody thinks the needs are. Right. And for all the organizations that collect the money and distribute it, I, I'll be very careful what I say, but I would venture a guess that most of the organizations that dispense money depend on the organization that they're dispensing money to to tell them what a wonderful job they've done with it. Right, right. I don't think too many people That's get out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Get out and follow up and say this really happened. Exactly, I, exactly. Well, you know, one thing that we're doing different, and that makes me feel good about what I'm doing and answering these calls and everything, is that when when I call them back or they call me back, because I do tell people, let me know the results here for you. I'm not just giving you numbers, I want to stay in touch. I want to make sure that everything you're satisfied with, because if, I, if we didn't get you to the right resources the first time, let me dig in a little bit more and find you, find you additional resources. But ultimately, Joe, the bottom line is, every single one of them say, thank you. You took the time to listen to me. That's so different. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think that our callers need to know that every call that this organization receives is logged on a computer That's right. and at three different places and that three different people have the capability to examine the phone calls, listen to the phone calls, any time of the day or night, six, seven days a week. And sometimes when I listen on the weekend, if I think that the call is significant enough that I need to call them myself, if you're not in the office, I have done that. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not that we're checking on each other, it's we're trying to do the very best we can right. to meet the needs of the people that call us. And I think, I think more nonprofit organizations need to be developed that way. Um, not everything can be done the way we want it to be done, 
Right. But I think we can, uh, most of the time, improve on what it is that we're doing. I agree. I agree. But it is across the board, and certainly I feel what I do is not a job. I feel good to come here every day because I know if I can just help one person, that one person is going to be living in a more dignified senior life. I, quick story. I, uh, I remember years ago I got a phone call from a lady. I know that still listens to our radio show. She's been listening to my radio show for 15 years. I made a comment about nursing home help, and a woman called me and told me what had happened. It took us six months, but the woman was returned uh, something like thirty-some thousand dollars for incorrect uh, acceptance of funds at a nursing home. Wow. My point here is that if you don't get your problems identified to somebody that will at least take a fair square look at it, you don't ever solve a problem. That's right. I concur. Absolutely. So are you going to still want to continue to be the information specialist? You bet. I'm here to help everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel the same way. And I, when uh, Mr. Jarvis from the Shine organization told me that all of them are volunteers, I didn't feel so bad about volunteering my time. Quite frankly, I feel good about volunteering my time because I think it's something that needs to be done. People need help. And if we do it right, there's always a way to help somebody somehow. That's right, Joe.